And hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Your Money Radio. Let's see here. Uh, Davey Stewart, Alex Katutis, Hunter Mazingo, Don Vanderbilt here with you. Uh, listen, Hunter, I've got updates for you out the wazoo, right? Like the E-Trade baby was making money out the wazoo. I've got updates for you, my friend. First, um, we talked about Whataburger, what, two weeks ago? Okay, so Facebook was completely listening to that conversation. So I must have uh, like like let my microphones on or whatnot. And so uh, Facebook's listening to that conversation. So I guess I'm getting served up a bunch of Facebook ads. I mean, excuse me, a bunch of Whataburger ads, right? Like how great Whataburger is. Do you, I forget where you came down on the scale that you like Whataburger and Don doesn't oh, like yeah. Whataburger. I'm, I'm a big Whataburger fan. Yeah, I, I'm pro Whataburger. Don, you're anti Whataburger. Uh, I'm okay with Whataburger, but I, I mean, it's not nowhere near five guys i don't know man price price and value you know what that's a whole that's a whole other show guys pretty expensive though isn't it that's a different uh, that, that was a whole debate about well inflation. we're only allowed to eat one burger a month now fellas that's right Danny, uh, why would you do that come on you gotta make he's scary <laughs> like honest to god like are you have you not thrown enough warm-up pitches in the bullpen do we need to start over one I mean, burger a month seriously danny anyway so I'm getting all these ads. Then all of a sudden, I'm getting served up. Join David Robinson, NBA legend David Robinson, as he talks about leadership at Whataburger. Whataburger. So we're talking. We, we were talking about inflation uh, last. Uh, last. Um, well, I guess we could measure it by TNX, just interest rates and what's what's happening there. Um, uh, maybe two shows ago. I can't remember if it was last week or two shows ago. So there is not. There's not enough workers. And so, and everybody knows that there's uh, people are having, they're having a hard time, especially at the service industry level, getting people. Yeah. So Whataburger decided to do something about it. They hosted this last week or the beginning of this week. Cause I went, I, I, I watched it. It was pretty good. Uh, they need not managers of the individual stores, but they had uh, team leads. And to entice like store leads uh, to, to what work for Whataburger, they're paying them six figures. That's that was the whole crux of pivot to a career at Whataburger, led by none other than NBA Hall of Famer David Robinson. The Admiral. The Admiral. Like it in it and it all that because and someone's like, what the hell is Tim talking about? All that because Facebook was listening to my conversation that we were having here <laughs> on, on the radio and I have my phone with me uh, while we talk. So in case Danny's got to message me or something comes up. We so, actually we talked about that the other day about the microphone picking up your what you talk about and then getting asked for it. Cause so I was telling them, I, I told Nicolette, I was like, I'm going to look for a lift top coffee table. And literally I go, I pick up my phone, go to Facebook and I get like three Wayfair ads for lift top coffee tables immediately. Yeah. So listen, you're not out of the woods yet here, Hunter. Um, uh, me mommy, uh, has written and, uh, and she says, uh, we were talking about the NFL draft, folks, uh, before we started the show. And listen, I've got a whole show for you, uh, stock guards and market lovers. I want to do some crypto, uh, the power of subtraction. Got a whole list of uh, whole list here to go over with you to uh, hopefully make you uh, sharper, help you become a sharper uh, trader and investor. So, but me, mommy, uh, with all the Alabama, how many Alabama players were taken last night in the NFL? Six, draft? I believe. Six. Six. On the record. Six. Six. Really. That's a, that's tied, a semi tied Miami. Down. Yeah, it is. But I think the 2004 Miami team with like Ed Reed and all those guys was the the other oh, wow. team to have six in the first round. Did that and did that Miami team win a national championship? I'm genuinely asking. Yes, I don't know. I'm pretty yeah. sure they did. You'd have to, right? So um, you never you would never ask an Alabama fan. So last week we were talking about what's Tumor's corner, and you were trying mm -hmm. to tell us what. Dude, me mommy comes in hard here. You would never ask an Alabama fan to describe Tumor's corner in Auburn. We don't need an NFL team in Alabama. We have Auburn, Alabama. Hunter's <laughs> nonchalant, who cares answer, needs a fuller visual explanation. And then she goes on to tell me. Not nice, happy with your passion nice. there, Hunter. She Look, she loves Auburn. She loves the Auburn Tigers. And she loves Tumor's corner. Who's, who's coaching Auburn? Uh, dude from Boise State. I don't know his name. Oh, we came all the yeah. unexpected hire. So, uh, and Gus is down at UCF now. What's that? Gus Malzahn took a job at UCF uh, down in Orlando. Is that a major school? 
UCF, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it is. And, and that's Scott the one Frost that claimed the, uh, they claimed the national title because they went undefeated. Dude, that Scott Frost team that last year he was there was pretty awesome. And then they had yeah, the linebacker, that, the, the twins that play up in Seattle, right? Yes, and, Shaquille and, and Shaquille. Yeah. 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 yeah, one of them was there. Is that in Orlando? Is that in Orlando? Yeah, yep. it's, it's actually right by Nicolette's house, uh, like 10 minutes away. And I know I know Don's familiar with UCF because the, the late, great Blake Bortles came from there to uh, to lead the Jags to their only playoff appearance in like the last 14 years. So, And then fell so, off a cliff. Speaking <laughs> of colleges, Hunter, you led me right where I wanted to go. Speaking of colleges, so I was reading uh, college enrollment is uh, at a two-decade low. And so that that's interesting because also, uh, conversely, at a high are uh, defaults on college loans. The college loan system is behind uh, the the government regulatory body that loans out money so people can go to school. Is down 500 billion. That was just either in the Times or the Journal uh, Friday as we're taping the show. I read it this morning. Like that's that's insane. That. There's so many people that, because you're not paying that bill because, it, I mean, there's always going to be a default rate, but people don't see the value in college or they haven't gotten the value from college and they're just deciding not to pay, which then got me thinking about uh, the dollar. Like, what's the dollar worth? And then, I, of course, Danny called and I wanted to talk to him about this. And so I have a chart of the dollar up on the screen here. And what you can see is uh, how it's spikes up here to uh, a high back last uh, February, early, early March, just as the pandemic was kicking off. And then they turn on the printing presses and you can see what the dollar has done over the course of the last year. And it really got me thinking of the dollar as just one big mountain of melting ice. It's a snow cap. It's a snow cap in the Sahara. And the dollar has been devalued so much here that it's no wonder that when you look at um, a chart here of, say, Bitcoin and a lot of uh, stock nerds, market lovers, I know a number of you like trading in the cryptos or you're into the cryptos, but oh, I keep doing this and I apologize. Um, BTC, like B Bitcoin is this is a bull, super bullish chart of Bitcoin coming back through the 21 uh, today up about uh, 8%. But if you just look at the chart of Bitcoin, and of course it's all over the news, right? But you need alternative assets. There, there, there's a reason why, like there is alternative an alternative asset boom. Like we talked about NFTs, we talked about. Can you even see that? That's uh, Captain Lou Albano, Danny, little little WWF trading cards from back in the day, little Roddy Roddy Piper, like those cards. This those are your alternative assets. This box of cards unopened right now is about two thousand dollars on eBay. Like the alternative asset space is insane right now. And and I really think it's a function of the dollar. And then someone, I sh if they're still with us, like they haven't left the beginning of the show just yet. I want to show you the chart of Apple. And I want, I want you to understand where I'm heading with this. So Apple uh, reported, I had to write this down uh, the, other, the other day from Apple's quarter. Let me read you a couple stats. We'll look at a couple stocks here, folks. So Apple the quarter one number here that stood out to me. I mean, what an amazing quarter, but they made $691,203 every minute of every wow. day in quarter one. YouTube, not, not Google, but just YouTube. Like if YouTube was its own company is the best acquisition in the history of the world, YouTube by Google, what back in 03, 04, uh, YouTube in quarter one, just in ads alone generated six billion dollars now amazon which just reported last night not it not their sales not the earnings not the cash flow nothing but ads the ads that suppliers and vendors pay so they can get up to the top they can get a ranking in amazon eight billion dollars in the last reported quarter but then i want to show you this look at apple's response if I told you, if I, Alex, if I said, hey, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I said, Alex, I've got a company that makes $600,000 a minute. You would throw your money at that, right? Yeah, or I would ask how they did it. 
Oh, for the love of God, just go with yes. I'd take my money and take my children's money. That's how the show works, Alex. These are short answers. Not we don't critically the question. Yes, man, Alex. yes, we need yes men on this show. We don't need more. Well, are they selling crack to babies? Because I'd really be concerned about <laughs> that. That throws off the whole momentum of the show. But we'll, we'll come back to you in a moment. Hunter knows how it works. So when you're looking at Apple and you're looking like at these numbers, but then you see this is the daily chart I have up here, and you, it was down yesterday. <laughs> Like when you look at Apple finished lower yesterday and it's come back to the 21. And it's like, well, what gives? Like I can see maybe not stock nerds and market lovers per se, but there's people around you that would say, why isn't Apple to the moon? You know, like why isn't it not trading at an all time high? Like look at the response from Amazon today. This is, this is a horrible response. The expected move in Amazon uh, which you can figure out super duper easily. I'll show you right now because there's a lot of new people to the work here. So Amazon, right? Uh, last night going into the print, uh, if you're looking at uh, the, excuse me, if you're looking at the implied volatility, this read 76%, and this number here read plus or minus 138. That was plus or minus. So all you're doing right now, up a percent, up $35 in one of the best reported quarters in Amazon's history. You're just trading within the at the bottom end of the expected move. This is a horrible response to Amazon's earnings. This is not good. And 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 like, how about AMD? Did you all watch AMD? Had a great quarter. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> AMD starts up pre-market. Like if I put look at that spike. If I put this on a 15-minute uh, chart. And I go to style and I go show extended trading sessions. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty interesting pre-market move here. You, you, you're all the way up. Um, no, that's Friday. Excuse me. Let me go back a couple days. I just got to go back. Let's put it on a 30-minute chart. Back, back, back to 90. That's a little Chris Berman for you there. 90 is where we're at, right? And now you're trading 82 on the backs of a great quarter. And so it got me thinking yesterday, if that was the response from – um and uh, well from apple and amd who's, who's left to buy this market like what what do you have to do as a company to report what do you have to do as a company to report to get people excited about your stock well you could say to facebook facebook is twice the expected move the expected move was about 12 to 15 dollars it's kind of holding serve here it went out at 307 i believe uh, the night of earnings, which was Tuesday night, and now you're trading 324. That's holding serve. But what what else is there? And then it got me thinking, well, what is that a function of? It, it, the numbers are all skewed. Everything's skewed, in my opinion. I'm going to get Danny to weigh in here. So, Danny, hopefully you're paying attention. Everything, I'm here. Oh, thank you, baby. So everything is skewed because of how many dollars have been printed. Speaking of skew, Alex, before uh, the show started, the show before the show, which is oftentimes better than the show itself, he says, hey, Tim, tell me about the put call ratio. Are you seeing it spike up today with a little bit of a pullback in the markets? And I'm like, yeah, a little bit. But look at how different this is. Like, I'm going to scrunch this up. I want to make this chart smaller because of, oh, it's not going to let me do it. It's just going to screw with me. Um, you know what? I'm not going to mess with it. Let me just reset the chart. And then we'll take a look at it. But because of all the dollars printed, because of all the stimulus taking place, which, by the way, not not against it. It was oh, here we go. It was much, 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 much needed. You used to have to get up to a 1.6, like over 1.1, like to really see true bottoms. Like here's 2019, true bottoms in the market. And then you could really just plow on some positions and be aggressive with your with what you're doing. And it was still that way as the pandemic hit. But now, because of all the dollars printed, everything is skewed. It's, it, it, it throws off the numbers. So I, I say Apple printing all that money, it sounds impressive. But in the whole grand scheme of things, is it? Like, has the dollar been devalued that much? And what gets the dollar back? And I'm like, well, Tim, you sound like, um, like, uh, like a, nut, a nut job, really. Because do, do you need the strong, like, are you telling us stocks can't go up without a strong dollar? And I'm saying we've lost so much buying power as a consumer that they've had to line our pockets with money. You just had a fantastic uh, income number reported 
for the month of March, right? You just got the income number that was released today and it's at an all time high. Well, no kidding. That's because they have literally, they literally went in and put money into your bank account. But wages haven't gone up. Wages haven't gone up one bit. They're going to keep printing money. They're going to keep doing things to stimulate the economy. Danny, they're going to keep buying bonds. They're going to keep driving down the value of the dollar, right? Because if they let the dollar come back up, who does that hurt? Multinational corporations, and a lot of those are in the S&P 500. Who does, if the dollar comes up in value, who does that hurt? Apple, selling their wares overseas in all those different countries. And so it really begs the question, like, I don't think we're turning back. Like, Danny, they can't take dollars out of the system. They can try, right? They can, they can take dollars out of the system in an effort to boost the value of the dollar, but what is that gonna to do to the economy? Well, it, you know, look, they can suck money. There's two ways they can, they can strengthen the dollar. They can raise interest rates or they can suck the excess reserves, suck the money out of the, out of the economy by buying the bonds back, Here's a, and which effectively raises interest rates. The problem with that is you're gonna cause interest rates to rise. You're gonna cause a massive recession you know, leverage works both ways. So it's good greasing the wheels and putting money in the economy. It speeds things up kind of artificially. Same thing when you take it out. And so if they take it out and cause a big recession, then they've got to admit that they were wrong putting too much money into the system to begin with. And they'll get kicked out of office and the Fed chairman loses his job. Everybody, they're going to keep the punch ball going. Now, there's a couple things going on here. So they're devaluing, devaluing the dollar. And by the way, they knew this was coming. That's why they came up with that MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, which essentially says you can print as much money as you want, stick it in the system, and it won't have a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about that logically on the surface. So anybody that's an MMT proponent, in my humble opinion, is a moron. They don't understand real economics. But they're going to keep it going. But here's one other thing on top of that. So on top of the money slush fund keeping going, trillions of dollars being spent, you also have a supply demand issue. So we have a significant chip shortage and those chips go in everything. So TV prices are about to pop now because they can't make enough autos. They can, do you know that I think it was Volkswagen, uh, Port, there were three automakers yesterday that said they're shuttering some plants because they can't get the chips to put in the cars to make the new cars. So right. that is not technically inflation because of money printing. That's a supply and demand. That's a supply shortage making the price go up. It feels like inflation to you and me, but like if you go to a car dealership now, they're not gonna, they won't even negotiate. It's like- No, they don't have to. They don't have to. Yeah, I mean, I mean used cars are almost as expensive as, as new cars. But anyway, no, that's so you got a double <laughs> shot, but they are, they are absolutely printing money and they're getting to the point of no return. And that's one reason you see these, like you said, these alts going up and showing strength because these other things, you can't you can't print more of them. That's the way they're designed. Yeah, that's why I think that, you know, like uh, I know there's people in our world that will, uh, in Dogecoin, uh, the, the mem coins, the, look, I get it, they're, they're men as jokes, but nobody asks you at Target when you go to buy things, did you, did you make your money off of Dogecoin? Or did you make your money uh, in, in the stock of Apple? Or did you go out and earn it uh, in a different matter? They don't care. And the devaluation of the dollar, I think, is going to loom heavy on a lot of our co companies. Because like, think about these earnings. Like, I'm not saying Apple's not going to go back up in price. But what is, what is going to be the catalyst to get Apple to s exceed new highs? And they announced, like, if you're a bull, like just a bull market bull. Now, if it's a Sands Apple, they announced everything that you would want one of the world's largest stocks to do on um, Wednesday night. They they is it 90 billion or 90 mil or nine? It's 90 billion, right? Or 90 million buyback? The buyback, yeah. Yeah, the buy billion. like like on top of the buyback, like they have so many shares outstanding, and they're generating so much money that they they increase the dividend. They increased the buyback. They're trying to get the supply. They're, like we talked about taking dollars out of the out, out of the circulation to increase the value of a dollar. They're trying to remove shares of Apple. 
but yet the the demand isn't there yet and it, it has to like what number i'm of course this market this is a bull market man look at the spy so let me just be real clear before someone goes jesus for markets at all time highs this guy's really a bearish person but i mean you're at all time highs here but what's the next catalyst like what is what is the thing that gets the spy to to move higher or the or I'm talking you guys think I'm talking Nasdaq not you guys but well, well hey one, one more thing another reason yeah. that it's the headwind so yes these companies um, you know just came out with blowout quarters but this new tax proposal with the, the big increase of taxes in corporate and individual tax rates all right so yeah they made a blowout quarter well the government's going to take a third of that. Well, hold but on some, now, some Danny. Number, some like, number, some number. That, that like doesn't look like at night to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting upstairs that I went to because I was just about to transition to taxes. See, this oh, is what. No, this is great. I'm that I was your trying, thunder, Tim. I'm, I'm, I'm three steps ahead of you. I was trying to figure out how to get the transition to taxes because I think it does matter. Like, I think it absolutely. Don, I think I muted you. I think it's your computer fan. Do you have a laptop or a desktop? I think it was the ceiling fan. I turned it off. Really? That was a ceiling fan? Every once in a while, it does this squeak thing and or oh. a humming thing. And oh, I turned it gotcha. Off. Okay. Um, well, you're back. So taxes. So it's really easy to let this tax thing, and, and there were really no details given in that Wednesday speech uh, about how we, uh, the government plans to pay for all the new incentives and all the programs that they want to introduce. Um, but you got to think though that there is going to be like, and we did that show. Like that show is right here uh, last week. Uh, a Q4 sell-off is brewing uh, because it, it, if they don't make it retroactive, meaning that if they don't make it back to January 1st of 2021, then that means it takes effect at the beginning of next year. And if it takes effect at the beginning of next year, well then yeah, there's going to be a, an exodus. And I, the issues we raised last week are are many, and a lot of them. This isn't just going to hurt people who uh, somebody might go well. The screw the wealthy, they've got their money. Man, there's people that own dry cleaners, people that own uh, uh, restaurants if they're still open, God willing. You know that own small businesses that spent their whole life uh, building. That when they go to sell it, it's going to be treated like ordinary income, and it's going to trip them into this doubling of what they would have paid on a long-term asset. And so um, if small business is the biggest employer in this country, small, medium-sized businesses, if they are truly, and they are, uh, the biggest employer in this country, private employer, then you're, you're about to put a massive hit in the economy. Because you think, who's going to sell their business? Uh, they're just going to shut it down, right? Well, you're going to have to sell your business just to pay the tax. And then who, who better yeah, to run? Like, like it's a whole but, issue. And so then we got a, uh, some pretty passionate responses uh, about this issue. Um, and look, I'm, instead of getting into um, uh, what's that? Well, I don't want to get into the actual details of what uh, <laughs> our, our good friend of the show and, and, and good, my good friend personally, uh, Uncle Tony. Uh, he sent over uh, just detailed analysis of the tax issue and how it's going to affect investors. Let me, I'm trying to pull the screen up here. And instead of going over that individually, what I think is better is if you just want to reach out to him right here, Seat Snob on Twitter, Uncle Tony is a good human being, uh, no better friend of the Marine Corps than Uncle Tony. Um, and he's really not, he's a really smart man. And so, uh, but if you have questions about well, how this, man. what's that? I'm t I was taking a shot at Uncle Tony. I said, oh, I gotcha. Well, I, he, he's breaking. I think Uncle Tony's breaking. He might move out here to Texas. Like, oh, he's, he's been talking about it. I said, come on, yeah. baby. Mm -hmm. like, I think yeah. he's starting to break. Like All the add-on taxes that you have in California are, are if, this, if this does get passed through the way it's been proposed. Um, but Uncle Tony has broken it down, uh, and he will be more than willing. I know he will be. Uh, to engage with anyone listening uh, about how it could affect them personally and, and things that maybe you want to think about. And so that's Tony. I like to introduce people that I know can be helpful. And uh, Tony can absolutely. 
Hey, by, by, by the way, one other thing that's disingenuous about this tax proposal, mm -hmm. you know, they're talking about the step up in base. You know, they said we're not going to lower the estate exemptions. We're not worried about that. But that step up in basis, you don't get that anymore. So yeah. now you're going to pay whatever you inherited, you know, the original cost yeah. basis. And and then they said it's really meant, and we'll give a little exemption, you know, of a million dollars. You know, nobody knows what it's exactly. Confusing. Yeah, yeah, nobody. But but if you've got a decent, you know, an okay business that's worth ten million dollars on paper, but it's all mostly assets. You're yep. you know you're asset rich and cash poor. You don't have the money to pay the the taxes. So it wipes out your business. Here's the thing: they keep saying that it's going to get the ultra rich. Guess what, folks? The ultra rich. Are the biggest lobbyists and have the deepest pockets, and they bought off Congress on both sides of the aisle. I don't care which side you're on; they already but, have family foundations. They don't; they're not going to pay any of this tax. None of it. Two things: you, when you said asset rich and cash poor, you described 95% of small business. That's oh, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's part one, and part two is, you know, I don't think like the intention is to. Uh, well, depending upon how you interpret the tax law, the way, and it, by the way, it hasn't really even been proposed. It's just been leaked uh, and written about, like what people think they understand about it. But uh, enough, like it's not this formal thing being debated in Congress yet. And so uh, they floated trial balloons up to see what the public can stomach. They want to see what, what, what people will withstand. Yeah. They don't lose all of their base. Here's the funny thing, though. Is it just me? Or does this seem kind of like a Ponzi scheme? Okay, we're gonna spend three trillion dollars and then we're gonna tax you a trillion and a half back and take half of it back. They're, they're taxing their own printing is what they're doing. But I don't think it's gonna work. And and not just for maybe the reasons, Danny, you're thinking. What if what if the people that have these long-term assets don't sell? Like if you owned Apple stock for the last 40 years, what if you just don't sell it? And it doesn't trip up like like you need a sale of an asset to happen to get tricked into this and what happens if the world collectively you know or the world the country just collectively says yeah i'm not going to sell and they've got this new tax bill out there and nobody sells there's there's that's the alternative well, that, that would not have to be in anticipation that joe biden or whoever that the that tax law would be revoked or reversed at some point and maybe it'll go back to normal like let's say that danny danny's probably danny's 51 or 52 am i right looks 30. Sure, sure. okay sure <laughs> so let's say danny has, uh, you already good. had your review hunter settle down <laughs> <laughs> so you said I, you shaved you got a little haircut again yeah, I did. I thought I looked pretty cute. I've been waiting on some comments, but I got some pre-show. Huh? But well, I was waiting for a break, and Tim's, you know, but he's sorry, Tim. Didn't mean to break. Sure, me mommy will send something. Fine. No, uh, she, I, oh, I love me mommy. I, I like. I look forward to her contact after the show. I, I do look forward to that. Um, if Danny, if you own, I, I reckon the way you're going, you probably got 40, 40, 50, maybe fifty more years. The way, the way medicine's heading, back in this earth, right? And if you own Apple stock, tubes. yeah, yeah. Like if you own Apple stock and you don't want to sell it, you like, you haven't sold it for the last 40 years. Why sell it now? And so you, why give the government the satisfaction? Because in another, well, in another that, 40 that, that, years. That may be true, but the actual opposite of what you're saying may happen. If it looks like the tech this new, whatever they pass is not going to be retroactive to the beginning of this year. Nor, they've done it before, but normally they don't do that. And they start a much higher tax bracket at the beginning of next year. You could see a huge wave of selling this year to pay the lower tax rate. No, I, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. that but if nobody, because the government never screws anything up. But if the government, if, if the government, if the government were to sell, I'm sorry, you got. Well, you, hold on. You just made an. You just insulted the government, which I started laughing at because it's funny and it's true. And then that got me thinking about journalists, like how journalists don't know anything. Like if journalists knew something, like this is why I, I tell people don't watch the news to figure out how, how to behave in the market because if journalists actually knew what was going on in the markets, they'd all be rich. They'd all be trading the markets. Talk about stupid. If Congress, either side, was smart, Hold they on, billionaires, not ten or two. I mean, they have. You said if journalists had the information, 
Congress has inside information and it's legal for them to trade on it. And they still are multi-billionaires. If journalists actually knew how to trade the markets. Isn't it, oh. they, yeah, they, they, they have access to all the information they want. They still can't make money with it. Like that's the, that's the, I mean, Pat Toomey, why would Pat Toomey stay? He's not powerful. Like no one goes the powerful Pat Toomey. Pat Toomey looks like the pitcher for Alfred E. Newman. Like if you put Alfred E. Newman up and you're like, oh yeah, I would vote for that guy. And then you put a picture of Pat Toomey up. They both look like they, you know, maybe not the sturdiest of people in the world. And so no one says the powerful Pat Toomey yet this guy, could have could have could have really took the screw like he knew all the things that were coming down with GameStop. He owner of trader of GameStop, Pat Toomey. You can look it up. Why is he still in Congress? Like why deal with it? Take take your winnings and all your insider information and go home. But stays there anyway. Um, look, I've got this chart back up with put call ratio because I didn't finish my thought on it and what Alex and I were talking about that with the devaluation of the dollar. And so how you use this chart is typically. Um, you can see here, the new level is like 0.7 with the devaluation and all the stimulus. The new level up here is 0.7. And when you start getting up here, uh, you start and, and it's matched with this high put call, excuse me, this 10 day, I'm tracing over it. The blue line is a 10 day movement average. When you come up into that level, stock nerds and market lovers, that is sustained put buying. That That is, boy, people are getting really super bearish. And when you see the 10 day moving average coming up like that, it typically starts to initiate a bottom. And you, someone could look right here at the, in the beginning of March where 10 day moving average didn't quite get that high, but look, you, you had a, you had, this is probably two weeks of trading and then you gave up half of that move. It's when you get up here that you can really get super aggressive. And when you got up there, you got that sustained move. I, I don't know what's happening with the markets. I'm, I am a little bearish in the near term right now. I think you'll get a pullback to the 21 and the Qs and the S&Ps. And I say that because even though this is uh, at 0.65 currently, all you've done is flattened out here and you're not at the level where it, it warrants, I think, being super aggressive here. Like with that 10-day moving average was, was soaring up to that new height right there, I would say, yeah, you're probably getting closer to a bottom than you are to a top and you're just not there. And so you're just in like this stagnant nowhere's land. And all that though has been thrown off. You can go back and go, when when did, when did that all get thrown off? When the dollar started getting severely devalued. And, and if you wanna take the other, not the other side of the argument, but if somebody at home is thinking, well, Tim, do you think we shouldn't have had that stimulus? No, we needed that stimulus. If you treated this, um, this instance in, in fiduciary or, or financial time, like you treated 2008, it would have been three times, five times as worse as 08. In 08, they gave all the money to the corporations and that was the wrong thing. This time they gave the money to the people, but each result has its own set of problems. And so now when you're looking at, well, each, each uh, instance has its own set of problems, just look at like 10 year notes. So it, this, um, bring up Twitter here because it, it uh, brevity here is going to be our best friend. Where is oh, really Twitter? I don't know why it reset like that. I apologize. Give me a second. Give me a second. Here it is. So it, it, it wasn't about Apple and Facebook earnings on Wednesday. It was about 10 year notes and what they're doing and look at 10 year notes on this daily chart. And so, and the video goes on to explain the whole, the whole issue with this. If the 10 year notes go up in price, you'll see growth go up or at least stabilize. But the 10 year notes are getting stymied at this 21 exponential moving average. They're getting stymied at the mean. And if they can't reclaim the mean and they come back down to this level, you're gonna see the, the growth stocks, the high valuation stocks uh, really start to sell off, uh, not just pull back, but sell off. And look at what happened in price going back to February here. Uh, so here's February. You can see the dance, the 10 year, uh, note price is doing. And then just look at this brutal sell off in price. Well, now you've had this kind of, you know, bottoming out here and rekindling, and this is all it could do so far. And if it can't get itself up together, and start moving in this direction. And this is this is now triggering a new wave of price 
movement to the downside in 10-year notes, you're going to see interest rates spike up greatly, and you're going to see the NASDAQ, in my opinion, sell off. And so let's just look at these time frames real quick. Here's 215, uh, and here is the market bottoming around 331. So let's just put the cues up here really quickly. And so, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the cameras up. Did somebody, Danny, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm good. Okay, um, so here's two, here's 215 in the, in the NASDAQ, and everything is looking great, like a normal pullback to the 21 here. By the way, it looks like you're going to get a normal pullback to the 21 here. Like, it's the same setup is what I'm trying to say. I'm really being verbose, but I'm trying to tell you that at home, it looks to me like it's the same setup. And so you pull back to 21, you get a bounce, and then just all hell breaks loose. And what? remember what the 10-year notes were doing at that time. They're going down. And then 10-year notes try to recover. Market tries to recover. Down and then in look, price. Then your notes price down, down. down in price. Thank you. Thank you. Say that a lot because this can get are going confusing. up, down in price. Yes. So here's 331. At the bottom of your screen, I've got 331. What happened around 331? with the 10-year notes. They started going up in price, and so did the NASDAQ. Price came down, yes. Yeah, and so now, for someone who's like, Tim, I don't quite follow all that, I'm gonna just present one more. Wait, can instance. I put my Tim interpreter on real quick and clean that yeah, up? Yeah, please do, because it gets confusing okay, put, as well. Put that, put that chart back up. Oh, of the cues, yes, sir. Hold on. Just what you had. <clears throat> so, you so nobody knows, blow it up like you had it. So sorry, nobody sorry. knows in advance what's gonna happen. But what Tim is saying is, if you look on that chart where it broke, the tw so a lot of times going back on that chart, it would come down to the 21, bounce and continue the rally. It would come down to the 21, bounce and continue the rally. But when you get here where his marker is, and it's right there, when it, did, when it didn't bounce off the 21 and it broke through and you got a couple closes below, coupled with the fact that interest rates were rising, and bonds were selling off as well, that's mm -hmm. when the whole market really gave up the ghost and started doing that. So right here, he said, that could be the same setup, may not, but if it bounces off the 21 and rates start to drop and bonds start to go up in price, that's gonna be bullish. But if rates exactly. start to rise and bonds start to go down and we break the 21, you need to have a plan. Yep. Shouldn't be going, I'm going in using margin. I'm going 150% long. Yeah, and that's where that's what's setting up right now. And I, I'm not bear like I'm, and it's weird. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also on the economy. Like there's more money in people's bank accounts right now than at any point in time since they started taking those measurements. Like there's there there there's a tremendous amount of buying power out there. But what is it getting you? It's getting you less. It's getting you, the devaluation of the dollar is getting you less. And there's inflation. Inflation is such a, a critical role in this moment in time of our economy because it's not <clears throat> like it was back in the 70s, you know, when Jimmy Carter, it ushered Jimmy Carter out of office. I mean, that maybe I ran, but it ushered Jimmy Carter out of office. That rampant inflation, uh, the stagflation, what they called it, the, the, what was it, the pain index, the misery index. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, you have a chance here to like it's just all lining up. Danny mentioned the scarcity of automobiles. It, if you need an automobile, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna mute myself while I call. Yeah, if you need an automobile, you, know, you better be looking right now. Well, Quickly. well, no, if you need an automobile, you're going to be paying top dollar. Oh, yeah. If it, there was um um uh, out here where I live, there's a little community uh Facebook group. Uh, somebody's uh, main source of income for their farm, the building burned down. And because of the high prices of lumber and materials like sheetrock, insurance is only covering a third of what it truly costs to rebuild that building. Now, that could be a function of their policy. I didn't ask. But that's if, if there wasn't this lumber inflation, you know, we still have tariffs on lumber in Canada. It's absurd. Like right here. LBS is a forward slash LBS is lumber like lumber hit a new high today like it's not it, it's it's unrelenting if you want to uh there's a three-week wait time for sheet stock in lumber that's affecting the northeast 
Don's so offended he just got up and left. And now he's back. That's how offended Don is by inflation. And so, you know what else I'm offended by? Um, the dollar. Still? Uh, you uh, you brought you, – this you know, four or five weeks ago, Tim, you put up an ATR chart on the dollar, and it was right at the top. Uh, and right. that corresponded with the low in uh, the Qs, and the Qs have since rallied. The dollar is making a big move up today. Yep. Uh, as it got closer, you see it was riding down the negative two ATR. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's another uh, headwind that the markets could could be facing. Yeah, and it, it's all like this perfect storm coming together, and it's not going to happen overnight. I don't think it's going to happen overnight because. We get the reopening uh, that these people picking arbitrary dates. What the hell is the difference between right now, April 30th, and July 1st in New York City? Whatever. Open the damn country up, you know? And, and Alex, you're muted, buddy. There you are. Said it was supposed to be two weeks, right? Like, just open it up because there's people out there that want to go out, they're vaccinated, they want to spend. And yet you're gonna you're gonna make them wait. There's nothing special about July 1st except that uh, you're gonna give back their freedom on the fourth, close to the fourth of July. Give me a break, De Blasio. I think they just lost. I think they knew they were people were gonna come out anyway. They didn't care. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't want to have to go arrest 300,000 people, so they just did it. Yeah, like just you know, like people make their own decisions now because there's there's the vac there's so much vaccine that we can ship it overseas now. Anyway. That's a whole nother show, a whole nother topic, but there's going to be so, I, I, like the GDP number that came out, everything is so skewed. I mean, what, what's the number I, that I read this morning? 150,000 restaurants were lost in this pandemic. There's gonna be a restaurant shortage. And you're like, Tim, a restaurant shortage. Have you gone to a restaurant and tried to sit? I, it's, it, 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 not only is it A, crowded, it's a long ass wait. It's a long ass wait. And so it, it, to the point where I'm not waiting more than 30 minutes, like if, if it's longer than 30 minutes, I'm just not going to do it. I, I spent enough time in the military waiting in lines for things. I'm good. I've got a whole <laughs> lifetime of that. So, but that's the, the we're, there's such scarcity example, right now. Yeah, there's, there's such scarcity right now uh, because there's no chips, the cars, there's no workers. So it, it just, everything compounds itself. Whataburger offering you six figures to go manage a couple stores then they're begging you to come on board with signing bonuses like it there's such scarcity right now that leads to inflation and it's yeah. it's good i was just, i got i have a little a little story in relation to the, the car it. conversation right. right so i know don don has a jeep wrangler my first vehicle was a 1997 uh, red Jeep Wrangler and then I bought a 1999 Sahara Wrangler as well and so the other day I was oh, oh, froze. No. Froze. froze right on the story Jeep week? did you either one of you go to Jeep week last week in Dakota no that was oh how do I'm thinking this is a there he is look at Wranglers I might buy one I'm frozen <laughs> Yeah, you're good now. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. Basically, the gist is when I was in high school and in my first couple of years of college, I bought and sold cars a lot and I would just make a little profit on them. And so I thought, I'm, I'm just going to go look at like 1997 to 2003. I, that's the models that I like. And they're months of now with more miles on them. Than they were in 2012, 2015. Like they're now, they're now six, seven years older, eight years older with more miles, and they cost like significantly more than they did when I was a junior, senior, and high school freshman in college. And I was just like, this is absurd that these same vehicles that I used to buy for $3,500, $4,500 back then are now, I can't find one for less than six, seven grand, and they're older and they have more miles on them. So just to, to your point on the used car conversation, it's absolutely insane, uh, especially things like a Jeep or like a truck that people want. I mean, it is absolutely absurd. And then just a, one more car iteration here. Elon Musk this quarter 
they made more money selling crypto than they did selling Teslas. Yeah, he sold 10% of his stake in crypto, I believe, made more money. If you look at the EBITDA, he made more money selling crypto this quarter than he, he was did. testing the system. Yeah. yeah, they cleared more money selling crypto than they did selling Teslas. Well, and, and inflation is the attractor to cryptocurrency <laughs> and the valuation yeah, like, of the dollar. I mean, it, at least with more, you've got a chance yeah. of it increasing with Bitcoin. Yep. Your money's going to do nothing if it's in dollars, if it's just in your savings account. Inflation right now, it's just decreasing your purchasing power. Whereas, yeah, you can lose money on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, whatever, but at least you have a chance of maybe keeping pace or making or being ahead of inflation with those assets. But I'll put on Danny's tinfoil hat for a moment. This is this rise of alternative assets. And by the way, Ethereum, I think, has the best use case with NFTs and a whole bunch of other things. But uh, when you put on Danny's uh, tinfoil hat, the, the government wanted you in risk assets to prop up the stock market because that, oh, that's, that's not that's tinfoil. Frankie admitted it. Well, I know that. Well, you know that. But I'm going to get I'm going to get more to the uh, tinfoil here. Give me a second to set you up as a crazy dude. Um, okay. So next week, a little tin. Yeah, me too. Maybe like a funnel, you paint silver, something like that. Oh, that's the tin man. Tin man from Wizard of Oz. Um, but if you think about what's taking place in this time set, they want you in these risk assets. The whole retirement system in our country is set up based on the stock market, whether you want to believe it or not. It's not there's there's social nets out there, but they're very flimsy, like Social Security. Like we need the stock market to keep going higher so people's 401ks and IRAs continue to grow because that's where most of retirement money comes from. And so when you think about it like that, okay, we'll inflate risk assets because we're going to give you nothing just for saving your money like you used to. And the old good old days of the Carter administration, Danny, the good old days of the Carter administration, 16% interest on homes for mortgages, and you got a passbook and 10% savings, right? Yep. Has anyone ever said the good old days of the Carter administration? I digress. So now look at Don. See, I got him involved. There you go. Look at that, Don. A little head shake. That's how you do it, Danny. And so, but you think about what's what's happening right now. The government, the government kind of didn't see this coming. Ethereum, Bitcoin, the Doge, people, NFTs, alternative ways to buy art. The government didn't see this turn coming. And so now there, there, there's something other than the U.S. dollar to be bought. There's these, these other assets and people are going to leave maybe the stock market and go into the, so the assets don't get inflated as much as the government thought. And what's the government going to do about the rise of Ethereum and the rise of, it's decentralized. It's Thank all you. decentralized. They're out, of, they're out of control. Like the government has no control over what's taking place in Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of the mem coins. And people are buying them because what, what Hunter was saying is because at least it's not a melting pool of, of money. It's just not a big ice cap just melting in the Sahara. And so what's the government going to do, Danny? How are they going to get handled? Can I say something? Please. Um, I think the government can do something. They can go out because, you know, the majority of our, our, aren't our banks part of the government now? I mean, they are controlled in, in, in pockets with what they do. So they could come out and say, if anybody wires money or to and from a wallet with Bitcoin, that has to be reported now. So they do have some control. It's not disconnect. It's not completely disconnected. You can't just go buy Bitcoin. And, and it's a free ride. That is, you can, there is ways to see that. Isn't and so the government there, can control it. Isn't there an argument that could be made that says that Ethereum could become the, the world's reserve uh, currency? Because it's it, it, it translates the world. Like people are in Africa, they're not using Kenyan dollars where there's, or Zimbabwe dollars where inflation is crazy. Danny, what's the the dollar that you have sitting on your desk? What is that one? It's a million dollar bill? $100 trillion legal tender Zimbabwe dollar. It's legitimate. But when you, when you transfer that into Ethereum, it's, it, you know, you, you, yeah, but how are you going to buy a house? 
Well, How are you so, going to buy a car? So, well, so, so get, get, getting to his point, you know, you know, I'd said the other day that, you know, the, the cryptos have a couple risk, you know, risk, of, you know, whether, you know, one of those sites goes down uh, or you lose your password. But the biggest risk absolutely is the government. Because number one, they'll start to regulate it, which is the, what they're talking about. And if yeah. they feel threatened enough, they may just out, outright outlaw it, and then you're you're a felon if you want. What if the it. government has control? Like like the big thing. Just follow me here, Stockners, for a second. The 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 fear is like when you get in trouble with the IRS. This is why I, I never screw with like I'm I'm a big proponent of whatever the I don't do my own taxes. I have an accountant do them, and whatever the tax bill is, I want to pay them. I don't want anyone to ever think that like, I, I don't want to mess with the IRS. I'm fearful of the IRS. Don't be like Wesley Snipes. Yes, exactly. Like pay the taxes, whatever they are, just pay up and, and we'll move on. But think about that. When, when you do get in trouble with the IRS, the IRS can go get a warrant and they can go right into your bank account and start siphoning off the money. And if we go to digital dollars, what, what stops what Danny's talking about from the government coming in? And that's the whole problem with the Chinese digital currency, right? Like if China doesn't like you today, if China doesn't like uh, Alibaba today, if China doesn't Turn like off, yeah. Baidu today, they just go in there like a vacuum cleaner or like an elephant with its trunk in a cartoon, just like, let's vacuum up some whatever that money is called in China. Well, they, they, they outlawed the cryptos for their own Chinese yuan right. currency. And, That's and, my and whole point. And someone out there is going, well, Tim has really fallen off the deep end this week. No, it happened a while ago. But look at what Chinese <laughs> companies are doing. Look at Baidu. Let's put Baidu on this daily chart here. Peaked uh, earlier this year. They're under right now intense scrutiny. These companies are, of all the hypocrisy in the world, like take your biggest, the biggest person in your life, the biggest hypocrite in your life, Take that and mag like measure, like blow it up to a million times the hypocrisy level that you could imagine in your mind. And now let me just tell you that China is coming in and saying, you know, we're going to crack down on monopolistic practices in our country. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We don't want any competition. If, if you're a monopoly in China, we're exactly. coming after you. Oh. Like, I don't even know where to start with that. But it's he wasn't, he wasn't he wasn't paying enough to the Chinese government. You gotta pay it takes one to know one. He wasn't he wasn't well Jack Ma's who Danny's referring to. Yeah, but Jack Ma needed to give more to the government. Like, right. Like he, 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 he did himself in with negative comments about the government. You you oh, just yeah, can't yeah. do that. If yeah. you're going to do that, you need to do that from American soil and then never go back to China. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like that's the that's Even the whole that, plan there is. Yeah, even because they'll send people over here. Oh yeah, they got them over to here. Yeah, and so look, this this all comes back though. Like there would be this issue with inflation. Like, well, Tim, what's the pro? What's the solving here? I think that you need to, if you're not open to, and most most people I talk to that that reach out to me. And by the way, we'll, we'll cover that here in a second. Uh, they are like they like crypto. But there's a whole another part of our audience I know that's not exposed to it, and they 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 don't know how it works, which is fine. But I, I want to make this really clear: like, there's you, you can learn online. Feel free to do that, but just reach out to us. Like, I, I know that uh, I'm pretty sure everyone here has some crypto is involved either through crypto like ETH, which is Ethereum, Bitcoin, BTC, or the uh, the products that surround them, the ETNs, not ETFs, ETNs. Um, which are uh, ETHE or GBTC. Don't do the one that starts with the letter O. That is hot garbage. Like if you wanted to eat hot garbage, go buy OBTC. OBTC, it, oh, let's just pull it up here. OBTC. Don, what's the problem with OBTC? Uh, OBTC started out with a over 200% premium, which by the way, evaporated as of today. So anybody that bought at 50 or 60, you're not only down uh, by 60 some percent, you now have to own this because the attraction for owning it was it was 1% per year cheaper than GBTC. So you have to hold it for 60 years now to make your losses up. Oh my gosh. Like it's I, 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 on the I, premium. Yeah. Or you could buy it now after it shrunk. Which, which if, if, if you didn't understand what Don just said, I'm going to break it down one step different. 
imagine that you like Lamborghinis, but you're on a Pontiac Fiero budget. And so you get a Pontiac, somebody sells you though a Pontiac Fiero at a Lamborghini price. That's a great analogy. You're never going to make up that difference because it's a Pontiac Fiero. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Oh, man. I love Alex for this. I'm just going to pull it up right now, my friend. That's yeah, the show 80s. me a picture. 80s, baby. I sure I went with something different, right? Oh, you I, went I with totally... a Mazda Miata also. Alex, you know what a Miata is? Yes. You got it. Okay, yeah. I was about to say, you got to know the Miata. There's a Fiero. Oh my it looks God. Looks like a Corvette. Right? Oh, what the hell? Ninety thousand dollars for a Fiero, and you know it's recent because this guy's wearing a mask, and he's wearing a mask not because the wow, like ninety yours. grand. Oh my God, is this thing so ugly? Oh my God, Don, look who it is! It's hauling oats on a Fiero. <laughs> <laughs> that was the kind of favorite out. group, I think. Oh my Watch God! Watch out, boy! Oh She'll chew you up. Oh, Don and Dan for Halloween. Oh That's what you guys gotta you gotta go put the mustache on and get a wig. I went like that for uh, Halloween one year. I went as Oats. Totally. I hope there was oats. a Hall, or nobody would have well, known. Oh yeah, my friend Jeff was Hall, but uh, but uh, <laughs> just Oats. Just Oats. <laughs> just oats. Out for breakfast. The next time we shoot this podcast, that poster will be hanging behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew this existed? And this is why we don't plan out the podcast. Because nowhere in my mind did I have that we would go to Pontiac Fiero from talking about Bitcoin, which is because sorry for asking. <laughs> because it was a shitty US dollar and we're all everyone's parents and grandparents' money is just fading into the oblivion. But it got us here to Hall and Oats. I say that's a god gosh darn great show, Danny. Paul. And Oats. I just got a, a line for the show for that. Oh my God. I'm not even going back to the charts. We're just staying right here. Yeah. Oh my God. There's a different version of this poster. Make the grade. We build excitement. <laughs> I can't believe those are not. Well, those were kind of like a, a poor man's sports car in the 80s. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like an 80s Corvette. Yeah. No. It's like, well, but they were kind of cheaply built, I thought. I, can't believe this yeah, the, a, the AM4 was, uh, that's the one that Hall & Oates are uh, doing the Whitesnake video on there. That's so great. They were, oh, yeah, man. they were inexpensive little two-seaters. That yeah. is, oh my gosh, I want one of these. You know what's also back in vogue? The old Pontiac Aztec from uh, circa 99-2000, if anyone's ever seen that. But I'm not leaving this poster. This has made my day. I really just want to end the podcast here, Danny, but we've got other things to cover. Um, what is the, let's see, real quick. God, I don't know how we got there, but I'm so glad we did. Uh, getting a hold of us, just call any one of us. We all, uh, uh, that's where I was going. We all have some crypto, right? Oh, it was ET. That's how we got there. We all have some crypto or GBTC, don't buy OTSK, OGBC, and then Dan, Don did that. And then that's how we got there. Okay, I traced it back. It all makes sense to me. Who's our crypto expert? Full circle. Full circle. That's, that's probably Alex. Alex, you're a crypto expert? People call you to talk about crypto? I, I mean, I, I guess so. My, it's funny you actually say that. I had a family member call me today asking me where to buy actual Bitcoin. Do you shave your eyebrows in the middle? That's a really nice split you got going on there. I'm, I, <laughs> I, no, they're just – I'm Greek, man. What do you got? Hairy <laughs> eyebrows. I got to tell you what, because I got like the Burt going, hey, Burt, where I've got to get a split going on there so it separates, you know, Europe and Asia. Like, if not, it's just Eurasia. And so. <laughs> you don't have, yeah, yours are, yours are a lot smaller. Yours are, uh, yeah. mine are like Europe and Asia. <laughs> like, you've got a definite division of, of duties right there. Like, your nose knows, like, that is no man's land in between those <laughs> eyebrows. When you leaned right. in there, it became very apparent. Anyway, there was, great job with the eyebrows. You were saying. Yeah, so I, I mean, I had a couple of family members. They did call asking where to buy physical Bitcoin, and uh, right. you know, I recommended some some wallets. But the only thing I could say is that the brokerage companies, when are they gonna bring that on board, where you don't have to use an ETF to position I yourself? Can so, you do it on Can you do it on Robinhood, or I know you can do it on eToro. What, yeah, Robinhood. 
Robin Hood. Yeah, I'm surprised like TD and all these bigger banks haven't haven't jumped on board. And it, I, it doesn't have to be as big a deal as opening up a Coinbase account, which is in essence another uh, brokerage account. I have my crypto through PayPal. Like or Square. I literally went in through yeah Square Venmo. I literally went into my PayPal app. I'm like I'm sitting in my kid's well, daycare parking lot, only because I never realized I had money in there. And I'm like. I should download the app and see what's in there. Like, well, how did Mass Mutual invest hundred million into Bitcoin? Bitcoin. That's that? what I want to know. Is like, how did Mass Mutual acquire a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin? Where did they? How did well, they do that? That's like MSTR. Like the you know MSTR. Oh, Mister. Um, I want to know like where they where they're positioning stuff. Who's holding that for them? Well, who, who put together that purchase, right? Like, how did where did yeah. my strategy go to buy all the Bitcoin that they needed to satisfy their balance sheet needs? And so, and, and maybe by they the way, mined though, it. I mean, well, I don't know. I, China has a huge Bitcoin mining operation. Just FYI, like a huge yeah. industry of mining. Um, well, it's illegal for the people. Yeah, exactly. Right, Dan, I was just going to get to that. But, but look at this. Bitcoin is near, Bitcoin's hovering above the 21 near highs. And look at MicroStrategy. You know, and if you look at Tesla, which made the splash when they bought all their, uh, all and that their Bitcoin. that ripping up today. Yeah, but I mean, it's not it's not at highs. It's like a bullish at, engulfing, engulfing candle, though. Yeah, I don't know, man. The, the, it, it's interesting that the stocks that have talked about Bitcoin aren't performing as well as the actual asset itself. That's true. And, and so there's a number of ways to get it. Anyway, my point was, folks, if you want to just talk to us about it, uh, we can steer you in the right direction. You have a great, there's Alex right there, Alex at RiverAsset.com. Get a hold of any one of us. We're always here. We're here to empower you as individual investors and, and hopefully help you grow, make you laugh, uh, make you smile a little bit. And with that, so let's get into some research uh, moves we made. And then I've got, of course, one last thing. Uh, Hunter, kick it off. What you got? I just got a, a couple of names. Uh, pull up FTNT Fortinet. It's uh, the strongest acting cybersecurity stock. Some of the other names were shaping up uh, and over the last two days have not necessarily acted all that well. Uh, but FTNT reported earnings and so far has had a pretty positive reaction, especially when you compare it to how Apple or a number of other companies have reacted following earnings after they were initially up after hours and then just faded throughout the next trading day. Uh, so FTNT for all intents and purposes, has been acting like a leader. Uh, their chart looks a lot more constructive over the last three to five, three to four months than some of the other uh, names in the space. And then sure. just two more that, and you know, there's, there's been a lot of weakness uh, or just, Un, unsustained strength or momentum for a lot of stocks in a lot of different areas. Uh, but Snapchat has actually been holding up pretty well over the last three or four days. Uh, and there's been times where it looked like it wasn't going to, and it made, made a comeback throughout the day and, and got back above the moving averages, saw some volume come in. Uh, you know, it had that initial, initial uh, poor reaction to Pinterest earnings, made a nice comeback from that. It, had the uh, response to the convertible notes, had a good reaction to that. So it showed some strength in the face of adversity a little bit, I guess you could say. That's a pretty uh, three-day um, chart right there. I, I just put on a three-day hunter. Um, and so yeah. I, I like to take out long. Uh, I was looking at Snapchat earlier. Um, here, this is noise, all noise, 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 noise. But like when you go out just a little bit longer, like say to, um, let's look at a four-day real quick. Yeah. That's uh, that's what they call a good looking chart there, Ed. What you and they have on? reported earnings too, so it's behind them. Um, I guess that would be 422 is when Snapchat reported. The last one is Nucor, N-U-E. And I should probably say both Snapchat and Nucor are owned uh, in-house. Nucor for, for me personally, not in all the portfolios. I believe Snapchat is in all the, all the portfolios, but uh, Nucor is is trying to get to to new highs through that 8276 level and stay above it. They've actually gone above that level, I think, twice, mm -hmm. and not really continued it much. But can you pull it back on like uh, trying to see here? Maybe it's a monthly. 
that I need to look at. Yeah, pull it back and look at like 2008 for new core. Okay. Put it on you can if you can pull it back far enough to be able to see 2008 all the way to now. It's pretty much right at that all time high of around 83, 50, 84, right in that range, going all the way back to May 2008. Uh, so just interesting uh, position for Nucor, and obviously that's an inflation uh, type of play as well. And then good old, just I just want to follow up on this one. Since you mentioned lumber, pull up LPX again, Louisiana Pacific Corp. They got earnings in four days, but they're kind of starting to come back to the 21 a little bit. I just keep an eye to see what their numbers are like and how the market reacts to this one. Obviously, a lot of tech and growth hadn't had the best response to earnings, but I'm interested to see how one of the leading inflation plays responds uh, to the numbers that they put out in a few days here. They report on May 4th. Mm -hmm. All right. So is that all you got, brother? Yep, that's it. Alex, what you looking at, man? Uh, I got into intuitive surgical. I'm at, I use the gap. Um, waited a week. I'm down a little bit on it. I'm going to, I'm going to use that low you see on that open price on that as my stop area, a little bit higher. Yeah. Right there where your error was, um, as my, uh, line in the sand, but I, great fundamentals, medical space, that sector group is working. So I'll continue to watch that closely. And if it grinds higher, maybe I'll add a little bit. Um, the other stock, and I've been waiting for this name to give me an opportunity. It's John Deere, D-E, has come back to its 50-day moving average. They don't report till next month. This is, this is a name that exposes itself to the mining industry, home building, whatever, construction, great fundamentals. It is a growth. I, I consider it a growth stock. Let me look at the performance. In the past two years, it's doubled. So... Mm -hmm. This is a good area, you know, the 50 day. I haven't bought it yet. It's Friday, so maybe I'll wait until next week. But uh, that's, that is the name I'm focusing on. Awesomeness, awesomeness. Don, you have the 21 over 21 tonight. You have the Friday night video, folks, 21 over 21, Don's watch list. Get you going for the next week. Uh, you want to talk about moves or the 21 over 21 list? Uh, a little bit of both. The I, I think that one of the reasons why there was not a lot of follow through on the big tech stocks with their earnings is that the NASDAQ 100 is already was already about four and a half percent extended from the 50 day moving average. Uh, normally, you can see it stretch up to about seven percent before you see a sharp pullback. Um, the market doesn't whatever it does, doesn't necessarily need an explanation. But if you're looking for one, that may be one possibility. Uh, and really look over the last three weeks, it's done nothing but go completely sideways. So it's working off a little bit of that uh, strong move up when we referenced uh, the last week in March when the dollar got up at the plus three ATR and now and now has come off. Uh, between the dollar rates and the lack of any growth stock seeing a bunch of follow through, you really do have to buy on weakness. Buying on strength is not being rewarded. Uh, a lot of, a lot of anybody that bought Amazon, anybody that bought Apple, anybody that bought AMD on their strong reaction to earnings. Uh, and the numbers really were fantastic. Uh, it's not paying off. Facebook is the only one that continued to see uh, can, strength hold up uh, on the day after the earnings were reported. So tough, tough market for uh, growth investors. We're cutting our losses quicker. Normally I go with about a 0.33%. Uh, I've narrowed that down to 0.2% and really only taking the best, at the I'm sorry, at the at portfolio level, well, yes, yes. Uh, really only taking the best entries to allow us to get between a three and 4% starter position. And then if the stop is hit, not losing more than 0.2%, but buying strength, uh, not being rewarded. Look at, uh, for an example of this, take a look at uh, Shopify, who also reported fantastic earnings. Uh, very strong breakout, very big volume above that 1250 level, gave it all back the next two days. This is what you're seeing here. Uh, also look at Net, had a, um, a big move up on some news of a partnership with NVIDIA. Uh, 
big move up, gave it all back to where uh, people would get stopped out and now trying to uh, continue higher. Just, the big move up was over there on uh, this. This is showing after hours also, right? Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. This chart. Here's Tuesday, right. yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. What day did that news come out then? Yeah, the big, the, the initial big move up was on 4:13. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have this chart back far enough. Pardon me. Can we, let me uh, go to uh, daily, and I'll get off of that. 4:13. Oh, there it is. No, that's. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. There it is. All right, there you go. Yeah, 4:13. Strong move up through the 50. Give it all back over the next couple of days, just enough to shake everybody out, and then uh, propel higher. So tough market. Uh, again, we're looking for only the the best entries, and um, to where if things don't go our way, we're going to get stopped out. You also have to be along with that. If you're going to be quicker to exit things, you've got to be quicker to take profits. Also, letting things run uh, is not beneficial in this market either. So if things start getting extended. Like for example, ETHE was extended 18% yesterday from its 21 day. So we took our 30% profits in that. If you're at home, uh, stock nerds, and you're like, how do I know how far that is? And you're, you're using Thinkorswim. You just do a, a simple, um, it's a trend line tool, but you can see that it's uh, 13, where well, the minus is just, just it's not a minus, it's, it's still 13% above its uh, 21 after pulling back a little bit. All right, was that it, Don? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that'll wrap okay. it. Awesome, I'll tell you what, Danny, I've got one more thing uh, to discuss with stock. I've got a stock idea. Or a stock I'm sorry, idea. I do have one other thing that before. Uh, two week delay on the um, lunch and learn. Okay. Yeah. So what awesome. is the day the lunch and learn is gonna be? The, the 26th of May. I gotta go up to Pennsylvania uh, for some family stuff uh, in the beginning of May. So the 26th, Wednesday, the 26th of May. Oh, it's moved, yeah, I was gonna bring that up. Uh, very right, quickly, you, I, want, I want to put my, okay. and then I'll wrap it up and send it back okay. to you. I okay. want to put my Don interpreter on uh, real quickly. So what he was saying was, in a nutshell, that because of this choppy, harder market, he's actually cutting the position sizes that he would normally take down because you manage risk with position size. And when he said that, you know, no position is going to have more than a 0.2% effect on the portfolio. So... On, and it depends, and that depends on how big of the position size that stock is, and its beta, how volatile it is. So that instead of having a maybe six or seven or eight, whatever it is, stop loss on it, he may have a four or five percent stop. So he's going to he's going to tighten up a little bit so that the overall effect on the total portfolio, which is normally 0.33, is now down to 0.2 per position. So I just wanted to clarify that because he he. he you know, some some people may not quite follow that. Oh, all right, yeah. folks. But all right, folks. Listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Just send them to revereasset.com, and you can email us with any questions, comments, uh, free complimentary portfolio review, and the new. And if you go to the webinar where Tim just highlighted right there, and you can just put your email address in there. And by the way, we won't spam you. We won't bother you. Reach out anyway. This is all spam free research it's up to you to reach out to us if you want to contact us but that webinars page you put your email address in and then you're signed up for the the lunch and learn webinars that don does about once a quarter on wednesdays at noon eastern time time permitting when he can do them now the reason you want to sign up live is because you can do a question and answer but if you work you're still he'll send you as soon as the recording is done he'll send you a recorded version so you can watch it at your leisure or leisure depending on how you pronounce it. Now, you can also go to the subscribe button. The subscribe button will give you this, this uh, our podcast once a week on Saturday morning, and it'll also give you our daily market insight that we um, archive every day, and it's any day the market's open. It's about a five, 10 minute short market insight telling you what's going on in the markets, dangerous or not. Time to take risk, time to take risk off, and some ideas we're looking at in the shop and a few moves we've even made. So it's it's really good research. Uh, you can also uh, email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, don at revereasset, tim at revereasset, hunter at revereasset, or alex at revereasset, or you could call us old school at 855-REAL-WEALTH. 
So real quick, uh, stock owners, I've got a stock idea that I want to share with you here and, and a screen I want to share with you too in a second. But look, uh, I, Twitter is a really great resource. It could be a cesspool. But for me, I love Twitter. And, and you can follow me right here. You can message me uh, anytime you want. Uh, it's super easy. My DMs are open. So here's Danny. Uh, if you want to reach out to Danny, like some people don't like email. They think we're going to spam them. We don't. If you don't, you don't want to call because you, you think you're going to get into some sales cycle. We don't have any salespeople. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you want to get a hold of us, multiple ways to do it at one Danny Stewart. Where, there it is right there. One Danny Stewart's right here. Uh, Don Vandeboard, D Vandeboard right here. Uh, D Vandeboard. Uh, I talked about Tony, but look, stock nerds have asked over the last couple of months, hey, how do I meet other people like myself? Um, I like talking stocks. And here's a good friend of the shop, uh, Mark from Buffalo. And Mark, uh, apparently Mark likes pro wrestling. Did not know that. There's Mark. Got a Mark from Buffalo shirt. Um, <clears throat> but at MK315, it, Mark has taken the work that uh, we've done here, made it his own, and he, he's a fantastic trader. And so if you ever want to talk trading with someone who's like-minded, probably like yourself at home, um, I think I think that, you know, talk with Uncle Tony about those tax issues. Tony's a good trader in his own right. Uh, talking with Mark, um, but it's not a bad thing. Stock nerds talking to the fellow stock nerds is not a, uh, a bad thing at all. Let me show you this pattern on, this is so rare. This is a 15, excuse me, an hour, hour chart of the S&Ps. You don't see what happened yesterday. Uh, a V-shaped recovery, like you, Danny, remember when all the news is talking, it's a V-shaped recovery in the economy. Like, they're rare. That's why people talk about them. You rarely see a V-shaped market move like happened yesterday in the S&Ps. And that's that's the volatility. Like under uh, on top of the, the the pond, everything looks serene, right? It's just sideways, but there's some violent liquidity breaks taking place underneath the surface. <laughs> but this S&P right here is in trouble. And let me explain. It's it's subtle because you someone would look at the daily chart going, dude, the market's down half a percent, Tim. What the hell are you talking about? And it's this. When you see something like this take place, this was the violent move. Then uh, you get the hopeful recovery. And now when you break the 21 again, you can see that you're not getting above the 21. And the longer you stay, like you're going to reach up to the 21 and fail again, the, the divots lower, just keep getting lower and lower and lower. And to break that cycle, you need on an hour, like this hourly basis, you need to reclaim that 21. And it's interesting because uh, the first trading day of May is going to be on Monday. That's May 3rd. And so... Normally, the first of the month is a jumper trade, like where all a lot of new money gets put to work, pension fund, hedge fund money. Um, gets, yeah, it gets put back into the, gets put into the market. It'll be really interesting if you don't see that happen. Like it happened on April first. Well, the first trade, you know, April first. Well, then the Easter holiday came, so it was the day before Good Friday. So it was a Thursday. So April first was a Thursday. You saw this big, massive influx of capital, and the markets jumped. And we talked about that earlier in the show. If you don't see that take place on Monday or Tuesday of next week, as Danny would say, can you bar the doors? And um, I would uh, I would tuck your tail if you're uh, super duper long in the markets because it's going to be a bumpy ride. And so um, you can watch this on an hourly chart. Maybe that's a little granular for you folks, but uh, just something to pay attention to. But stocks, Danny, stocks. Listen, we are, Daniel, we're on... Um, this zoom type call right i've got a little light over here to accentuate my my strong jaw and positive features hunter gets his haircut there's a light showing alex gets that thing waxed between his eyebrows and almost is the size of a continent like we've got a whole like we clearly care about our appearances here on the show and so uh there's a study out this week that says more men are getting botox because of zoom like all the Zoom meetings, that more men, look at Don. I knew Don could be included in this discussion. Don's like, Botox, I want curly fries from Arby's. Potato, <laughs> potato cakes. <laughs> the, the cakes, the potato cakes from Arby's? The potato cakes is what you want from Arby's. <laughs> They've got the meats. And so um, look at Hunter like, yeah, they do. Yeah, are you really I'm nodding your head? Like, oh, they do got the meats. I yeah. like Arby's. Yeah, yeah, they have great pizza sliders. Try them out. Corned beef slider. What? Really? Pizza I slider? Ate, I ate an ungodly amount of Arby's in college. Like, just insatiable amounts. Like, so, Hunter, did you ever eat at White Castle? 
I've never been to like, I've never even like seen one though. So I've never had a white mm -hmm. castle. Is it, I've heard it's kind of like, is it similar to crystals? Yeah. yeah crystals it's like is that. garbage. It's garbage. It, I like, it, I like crystals too though. I mean, I, crystals hamburgers are good to me. It's cheap junk food. It's cheap, but it's cheap junk food. Um, God, I made myself, st oh, 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 Zoom calls. So more men are getting uh, injections. And so like there's this pressure to keep up your appearances because like if, and it's unfair, like if we're being honest, does anybody know what Vern Lundquist looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Sadly. Yeah, Vern Lundquist looks like a troll. And so he's the voice of a lot of SEC <laughs> college football. Like if you imagine what somebody who lived under a bridge looked like and said, five dollars to pass it's Vern lundquist and so and and look it's a double standard in this country because and i feel awful because there's no because unfortunately the way this country works Vern lundquist is still allowed to go on tv but the tides are turning because they wouldn't let other people go on tv looking like Vern lundquist there's a bunch of men being judged now on their looks and they're flocking to botox because if you reinflated uh, Vern Lundquist's face, like it would definitely start to be shit. Look at Alex looking up Vern Lundquist. Let me know when you pick up that picture. No, I'm not, I'm not actually. Okay, I'm working. Well, See if you oh, can okay. find him on a Fiero. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best. But it got me thinking of who owns Botox. It's Abby. And Abby uh, just reported. And this is, I think this is, I'm going on a limb here. Haven't even done that. I don't, I don't know the fundamentals. I don't. And I purposely didn't look them up. I don't know. I know the technicals, but I'm going to tell you something about this stock. And this is decline, 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 decline. The market didn't know for this uh, earnings period here. This is back in 2020. Then, oh, look, men are getting all the injections. It's men. It's raining men. Hallelujah. With Botox injections, it's consolidated this big move. My number one stock pick, I'm going right now, April 30th, write it down, somebody. AbbVie for number one stock of the year because men need to look good. Because there's a lot there of Vern Lund there's a lot of Vern Lundquist out there in listener land gumming up the works on Zoom and they're being called out for it. That right there is top-notch research ugly dudes trying to catch up to the rest of the world yep nailed it danny take us home folks we'll talk to you next week <laughs> your money an almost it's, impossible position it's finger licking good <laughs> that's probably the problem with the Vern lundquist of the world right there it's too much chicken too much arby's too are they latkes or are they potato cakes no, they're potato cakes. They're like, yeah. Are they are they different than the waffle fries? Is this the show oh. after the show? Well, I'm just <laughs> curious. Are they hash browns? What are the potato cakes? At? You you you've got a chore this weekend to go and check them out. Are they, dip oh, them in, the tri are they the dip triangle? Them in, the triangles. Dip them in horsey sauce. The best, triangle foot Best side ever. Yep. Hunter, <laughs> man. Hunter, where are you going after the show? Are you gonna go get some food? Actually, yeah, I'm going to get chicken tenders and gravy from Whataburger. I'm sorry, Tendy. <laughs> Candies. gravy Candies. dude they're they're gravy top notch i actually dipped my burgers in the gravy from whataburger really how are you not 300 pounds no shit i was thinking I, the same i eat a lot and i just don't gain weight it's just i hate you it's been that way forever man i'm a i'm a tubby tubby so i had you to go to whataburger you gotta you gotta try the sliders at arby's the, and the potato cakes you gotta try the gravy from what you got to dip a cheeseburger in the gravy from what your, your arteries, bro. <laughs> He's going to run there. So it all, it all gets. Yeah, out. exactly. Yeah. That's I work out. So it cancels, right? You know, that's what they say. Yeah, ex I, I, It's not only for so long. All right, fellas. I'll talk to you. We'll talk to you next week on your money.